to transform a boring workspace to a super customized FL Studio without any limits, you're gonna need some knowledge. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to match FL Studio with your desk in real life or just create custom templates that you can share with anyone. Let's get into FL Studio. To start customizing FL, go to Options and then click on Team Settings. In this window, you can choose a preset. They are decent, but hold on, you can do much more with the controls on the bottom. These buttons can be hard to understand if you're not into color grading or video editing, so let me break them down for you. The hue is pretty easy. With this knob, you can change the color or tint of your workspace. It can literally be anything you want. The saturation knob works together with the hue knob. When you give your template more saturation, the present colors will be boosted. When you turn it down, your selected hue will not be visible. This is useful when you create black and white teams. Next, the brightness knob is not necessarily the brightness you get in Photoshop or something. This literally adds white to your template when you increase it. When you decrease it, you can obviously create a dark or black team. The next step is super, super important. You need to increase contrast. And we're gonna use the last two buttons for that. We all kinda know what contrast does. When you increase it on a picture, it will create more depth. But you need to understand why. By increasing the contrast, you will push the blacks and whites further away. This is why it creates depth. When you decrease it, you bring the blacks and whites closer together and that makes it look more flat. You can kinda see it like panning your sounds. When you pan your sounds, you will create depth in your song. When you don't, your mix will sound flat. Now, we do have one more problem. The text in our project isn't as visible as we would like. To fix that, simply tweak the brightness of your text. Now, this will only affect the text in your interface, but not in windows like this. To change that, click on the text color button. If you have a dark theme, set it to white. On a bright theme, set it to black. With the other color pickers, you can change little details such as buttons. To change the selection color in the channel rack and everywhere else, click this one. Make sure the color matches with your theme. Okay, the highlight is gonna change colors like these buttons on top. Of course, the mute buttons speak for themselves. They can change the mute buttons in the channel rack and the mixer window. You can also change the colors of the steps in the channel rack. Choose a color for the odd buttons and one for the even buttons. Make sure there's enough contrast between them so that the highlighted notes are still visible. Changing the color of the meters are super easy as well. If you want the meter to turn a certain color when it's reaching 0 dB, you can change the top color. Now, the last step is gonna change everything and that is changing your background. You can put literally anything in here, but if you want to finish off your team, definitely create something that matches your workspace. For my personal workspace, I like to use this astronaut. I created this quickly in Photoshop, but you can do whatever you want. Now, to add a background, go to View, Background, and select your picture from here. By the way, I also have five free teams for you guys, so go check it out down below in the description. You can just download them for free. Oh, and you can actually save your own themes as a preset to send it to your friends. You will find back the files in Documents, Image Line, FL Studio, Settings, and Teams. That's also where you can install the themes you downloaded. Now, don't forget to learn everything about FL Studio's new update in this video right here. It's, it's life-changing. Goodbye.